weight distributed across the pelvis and then shoulders back and down crown of the head lengthening up nice and tall we'll just take the breath in and out of our nose maybe take a three or four count breath in and exhale back out of the mouth or the nose and feel the breath in the rib cage excellent job so we'll feel the ribs expand from side to side underneath the shoulders also feel the ribs from front to back so it's almost like we feel this accordion opening and closing opening expanding the ribs and then releasing excellent job let's just start with hands on our laps and start with our chin now tucking down toward our chest so we feel this really nice release of those tighter back of the neck muscles and then chin up toward the ceiling we feel the stretch of our throat nice job and then one more time we tuck down and then we'll lift up excellent job next time we tuck our chin let's go ahead and imagine that there's a paintbrush on our chin and we're going to lift up toward our left shoulder all the way up to where 12 o'clock would be back down around towards six chin down toward the chest and reverse going up and around the opposite direction yeah you got it all the way down and then take the chin parallel we'll turn our right ear over the shoulder and then just turn your chin toward your right shoulder and we'll take a little rainbow arc so again chin up toward 12 but then all the way over to the left shoulder good job and let's take it back through the rainbow arc all the way up and back over to the right let's take our chin all the way down to the center and then back up chins parallel to the floor and let's take this over to the other side so right ear or sorry left ear over turn your chin toward the left all the way up in this little half semicircle back and around the other way excellent job back through center chin is neutral and then just one ear over the other good job and back through our seated mountain position so we always want to warm up our neck and shoulders especially at, before we do our first exercise because we're going to be using our shoulders and twisting the first thing i want you to do is have your hands right out in front of you and we're going to make a lotus flower so open up to where you have just your thumb and your pinky fingers touching and then open and close your fingers here good so this is for dexterity this is also a little bit of brain work this is your brain telling your fingers what to do it's good for arthritis it can be a little challenging so do the best you can have we got it all right let's go ahead and keep the thumbs and pinkies touching open up all the other fingers and we're going to flow this so taking that lotus flower all the way overhead and then just press the arms back down by your hips hands to your heart again prayer hands and let's round into cat so tuck the tail tuck the chin and then sitting up tall go ahead and find your lotus flower pinkies and thumbs touch the other fingers spread let's lift up overhead again find that long spine Good job, we're gonna add on this time. So take your hands down by your hips, to your heart, round in the cat. Now this time, let's come into our cactus. We'll tilt off to the left, excellent, to the center, off to the right. Nice job. Now hands to cactus, we're gonna take our left hand, twist, and see if we can touch our left hand to our right inhaling back to center here we are twisting with our right hand coming to touch the left and all the way back to cactus hands to the heart find lotus flower opening up the flower arms overhead 
Press the palms down, 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 hands to your heart, round the tail, round the chin, cat. Back up to cactus. Good, let's lean to the left, come back to center, lean to the right, excellent job. Left arm is gonna come across, touching the right palm. Good, open it back to center. Doing the twist, I like this one, the palms touching, the spine turning back through the heart space, you've got it. And then let's take our hands back to the heart. One more time, opening up the lotus flower all the way up, swim it down, hands to your heart, round the back, open up to cactus, let's lean to the left, back through center, lean to the right, to center, left arm crisscrosses over the body, touch the palm, inhale back, and then right hand touches left, excellent job and right back to the heart space good job just release all that out shake out the feet hope you like that one that's one of my favorites it really has this lovely twisting motion with the cactus arms the next movement we're going to do is a bit of patterning for our brains it's patterning and it's a little bit of a an aerobic lift so we like that because it really makes us um, think and it gets our hearts going so we'll be punching. We'll punch our right hand out and then our left forward and then right to the side and then the left, right overhead and left and then down toward the floor. Good, so that's our pattern. We start out slow and then we'll pick it up. So right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. That's it, we go forward, side, overhead and down toward the floor excellent can we pick up our pace a little bit as we go up and down and forward and side up down forward and side maybe a little faster <laughs> let's start again <laughs> let's go forward side up and down excellent forward side up and down again, forward, side, up, and down last time, forward, side, up, and down. Beautiful. The key is not to think about it. When I started thinking about it, I messed myself up. It's a good workout. Let's shake it out. We're going to be working with our feet today. So let's scoot all the way back in our chair, both legs up, and let's just start pointing and flexing them a couple of times just to get them moving. Now, one of very beneficial movement for our hips is to flex our feet and windshield wiper the feet because we've got our hip bone rotating in the socket. As we move our feet side to side, the hip is moving as well. So really nice movement there for the hips. So maybe place your hands there so you can feel that movement. Yeah, good. Keep that going and then settle Paddle out your feet, alternating the point and flex. Super job. Feel those muscles in your shins and your calves contract. Presses that blood back to your heart. Now let's work on our feet mobility. So back to our mountain position. Left foot, we're gonna bring it up onto our right thigh. And the whole foot, we're gonna point the foot and take your hand and press your toes straight back. So not off to the side, but straight back. So you're stretching the top of the foot muscles into the calf. Just get this nice stretch here. Excellent. Now release your foot and let's just take your hand to your toes at the toe crease. Point and flex the toes only. It's really nice movement for our toes. Point in and flexing. And then let's hold on to our ankle and circle around. Nice circles, round and round. You might have some popping and clicking going on. That's okay, just see if we can keep it moving. Go the other way, big full circle. We wanna keep this mobility of our ankle for better balance. All right. 
Now, specific movement for the toes now. So the fingers of your left hand are gonna take your big toe and pull it back toward your shin. Right hand is gonna take all the other four toes toward your toe ball mound. So the big toe and the other four toes are in opposite directions. Just pause there and stretch. It's good to stretch our feet. Excellent, good to stretch our toes. And then alternate, big toe toward the toe ball mounds, four toes pull back toward your shin. Now it might be kind of a little burning sensation, the feet aren't used to being stretched, but it's a good thing to do that. Are you able to separate your big toe from your other toes? <laughs> good job. So let's take that, kind of wiggle it around a little bit. We'll switch sides. So right foot's coming up. We're going to take the whole foot, point the toes, feel the stretch all along the top of the foot. Why we're doing this is because we're stretching our walking muscles. And remember, when we stretch the top of the foot, we're actually stretching the muscles under the plantar fascia. And that's a very important stretch for the pliability and the flexibility, the mobility of our feet. Now, going in back to our flex foot and using our left hand just to move the toes back and forth. Good job. Excellent. And then use your hand to come around in a full circle. If we've sprained an ankle or broken an ankle, it may not love this, but it still needs to roll around. So if you need to adjust and make it smaller, feel free. And let's go around the other direction. So your feet, so important, they bear all of our weight and 25% of all your bones are in your feet. So it's very important to make sure we have feet that are healthy and strong because they support us. Now let's use the fingers of the right hand to pull the big toe back. Fingers of the left hand pull the toes in the opposite direction. So think about reflexology, the mapping and the study of the feet. Take it the other way. This area of our toes maps up to our upper body, our neck, our eyes, our throat, our face. And then go ahead and go back and forth a couple of times. So the health of our upper, upper body is mapped to this movement that we're doing right now, this patterning. Very important, not just for our feet, but for our neck mobility as well. <clears throat> Remember this movement because we're going to come back to this, all right, at the end of class. For now, we'll release the toes back down, sit tall, and take our life force reach. So I want you to maybe scoot forward just a little bit, reach your arms straight out, sit really, really tall and reach, reach, reach. Let's wiggle our fingers, <laughs> nice. And then steady the fingers and let's start some small circles forward. So back to front, noticing how the small shoulder circles feel. And if you're able, we might start to take a larger circle. Excellent, medium size, good. And if we're okay with that and we can go for an even larger circle, just do what your body feels comfortable with. Your circles don't have to match anyone else's. Just take that out and around, nice and big. Do what you can. One more, oh, good job. And rest your arms and breathe, good. And then life force reach again, reach, reach. And let's start those little circles backwards. So front to back. Any difference in your shoulders going backwards? Can we make it a medium sized circle now? Breathing, good. And then bigger circles. This one is as large as you feel comfortable going. If we have arthritis, we wanna still move that joint. We want blood flow to the arthritic joint. Excellent. One more. Ooh, nice job. Just relax it and shake it out. Good. Shake it out in front of you. Excellent job. Now hands out and open and close a fist. So we spread those fingers wide open and then squeeze them tight. Open and squeeze. Spread and squeeze. Good. 
All right, let's go ahead and release those arms. Scoot forward of the chair. We've got goddess position with our legs. This next movement we're doing is called the Chaldean Archer. So we'll take our left hand out, flex your hands, it's like you're saying stop. We're gonna look at our left hand and your eye gaze will follow the hand as it comes out in front of you and across your body as far as you're able to bring it. Now the right hand lifts as we pull the bow back because we're archers. And then keep your elbow high and ping, shoot your arrow, release the left arm, and the eye gaze follows the right arm all the way forward and around and across as far as you can. Left hand comes back, we're gonna pull that arrow back, shoot the arrow, release your right arm, left hand flex, come out in front of you, all the way across again. Nice, let's lift that right hand, keep your elbow nice and high and release it, good job. And we're gonna take that right arm all the way across. Good, eyes watch, left hand comes up, pull your arrow back, elbow high, shoot it. Last time, let's take this left hand across. We're practicing our bow hunting. <laughs> right hand up, pull it, release it. And last time, we're just gonna watch the right hand go out in front, all the way around to the other side. Excellent, and just relax here. Let's heel toe the feet a little closer. They can stay wide. We're going to, because it's a windy day, put on a little heavier sweater. And then we get inside and we warm up. So we're gonna take it back off and really stretch. Good. And then bundle up again, opposite hand on top. And then pull the scarf off or the sweater. And then again, cover up. And as you inhale and pull back, really, really reach. Good, exhale. And just do this a couple more times, alternating the hand on top. We never want to pull back to pain, but we want to engage our posture muscles. So stretch the chest and work the back. So squeeze your shoulder blades together and stretch your chest. Come back in one more time. Open up nice and wide, lift the chest and wrap it in. So hopefully we're feeling nice and open. We're gonna interlace our fingers, take them out front and arms overhead now that we're nicely warmed up. Let's peek out on our thumbs, see that our thumbs are as in line with pinkies as we can, and then hands behind our head. Stretch the chin and the chest forward, arch into cow, elbows back. And then release your hands to your kneecaps and roll back into cat. Tuck your chin, tuck your tail. Interlace your hands, tall spines, hands come overhead, look up, press your palms, take them to the back of your head, and then arch, chest forward, chin lifts, elbows back. Nice, hands to your knees and round into uh, C curve. Now come back to hands at heart, use your opposite index finger to interlace this time and then really press the thumb up, hands behind your head, make a hammock and let the weight of your head fall into your hands. This strengthens all of our back muscles and then hands to the knees and we stretch, broaden across your collar or your shoulder blades. Same opposite interlace, come back to neutral, arms overhead, looking up, breathing, hands behind your head and arch. Oh, good job. Hands to your knees last time for that big stretch and back to center. Let's shoulder roll. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the nerves in your arms. Um, we have nerves all throughout our body, as you know, they come in and out of the spine. Sometimes the nerves don't have a lot of room. We can have uh, the disc of the spines um, pressing on nerves. We can have muscles pressing on nerves when they're tight. When we have the muscles of our upper arms pressing on nerves here, this flows up to our shoulders and our neck and can cause headaches. So we're gonna work with a stretch that can help you alleviate 
um, headaches. It also is just going to feel really good. So <laughs> right arm is out. And right away, what we're going to do is involve the nerves of the arms. So see if when you flex your palm, you can feel kind of a little nervy sensation. Look over your opposite shoulder. So turn your head to the left and start your head nods. Notice when you tuck your chin, how that feels around the upper arm nerve sensation wise. We're trying to create space for the nerve to flow through so it's not getting impinged upon. Excellent. Now look straight forward. Keep that hand flexed. We're just going to lower our left ear and come on up. So we're stretching out the muscle group. So everything has plenty of space here forward and back, just like the sciatica nerve sends pain down our legs because it gets impinged upon. Same thing can happen here in the arm and send pain up to the head. Good. Now, what we're gonna do is come back to our neutral spinal alignment. Take your right hand and touch the back of your neck. So we're just gonna bend the elbow. Now, notice as you lower your ear, you might feel a stretch right behind at the uppermost part of your shoulder right behind there that's your levator scapula and it gets tight from hunching forward it lifts and lowers the shoulder nerves can go right in through this area so we're making space nice now come to center look over to your left and take the head nods keep your hand just where it is and you might feel now it's gone to the left levator scapula stretching there we change the angle of the arm we change the angle of the stretch good now coming back in release this right arm mindfully internally rotate it and take your palm up and the head nods again so take that up and over good this is such a good one really starts releasing all that tightness we're getting different nerves each time we change the chin so let's come to center look over and head nods this time maybe two more nice work now let's place our hand on our lap notice the difference there's blood flow there's warmth there's a relaxation Let's take it to the other side. So our left hand, we're going to take our stop hand, flex the hand, look over your right shoulder and take the head nods first. Good. The best thing about this is you can do these stretches anywhere. I've done them in the airport before. <laughs> you can get funny looks, but you know, who cares? You're freeing up all that tension. Nice. Now come back through center and just your right ear over and back up. So we're going to do the whole series to this side. Excellent. Now one more. This time we're going to bend at our left elbow, hand behind your head, and again, ear over the shoulder, and see if you can feel that levator scapula back there on the right. Exhale and inhale. It's amazing how we just turn one little body part and the whole stretch changes. Excellent. Turn toward your right shoulder and lift and lower the head. Nice. Things should be moving pretty freely now. And then let's come back through center. Left arm's coming back. Mindfully uh, rotate inward, palm up, left ear over. Where are you feeling that little tug and pull and resistance now? Good job. We want lots of space for nerves to go in and out uh, on the cervical spine. Good. Look over the shoulder and lift and lower. Again, you're probably feeling less crunching, less resistance, things warming up, breaking up. Nice. And right back to center position. Ah, just kind of wiggle around in there. Turn your head, roll your shoulders. Notice how things are moving much better. We're going to do some teacup exercises to help alleviate shoulder pain. So we'll roll shoulders back and down, neutral spine, neutral pelvis, palms face up. The idea is to have your elbows very close, snuggled in at your rib cage. 
palms up nice and slowly open the arms out as wide as you can with elbows still touching are you feeling your rhomboids between your shoulders feel those muscles engage nice now bring it back in good job one more time out as wide as you're able squeeze those shoulders now we're going to take the elbows away from us palms start rotating in toward your rib cage keep your palm face up don't spill your tea straighten your elbow and take the hands out beside you and then come back to center good job excellent let's try that one more time so take the arms out away from your body in toward your rib cage Take that out behind you, palms face up, take a peek, good, and then back out. This time, the arms are gonna come out, but then overhead. So look up, the fingers face toward each other. Keep those palms up. Now bring it back in front and cross your right hand over the left. Excellent job, now open widen those elbows come in towards you and back and around oh we're going to repeat that one more time so arms come out overhead look up maybe back arch try not to tilt your hands come back in the front left hand over the right crisscross take it back elbows squeeze and then they leave the body wrap in toward your rib cage take it all the way back behind you excellent and back out in front super job shake it out off to the side in the front off to the other side so in our yoga classes you probably notice we do a lot of exercises for our neck and shoulders and that's because in our life as adults we move very linearly we walk in a linear fashion. We're not big and open like we were as kids, right? And we want to make sure we're bending like we were with those teacups, because if we don't move like that, we lose that ability. Use it or lose it. It is a true phase. So when our joints hurt because of arthritis or injury, oftentimes we don't want to move them. When you're injured, that's a good thing. But when you're recovered going through rehab, we've got to start moving again. And if we have arthritis, we still need to move or that range of motion is just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So we want to move mindfully and therapeutically. That's why you come here and learn how to move well. But we want to make sure that we're moving like that with teacups all throughout the week as best you can do a little bit on your own as well. So speaking of movement, I want you to find your cactus arms. We do this a lot in class. Just know that ideally we have elbows in line with shoulders. If that's painful, you can always lower your elbows down till it feels nice for you. If you have the ability, go ahead and lift them up, but feel free to take it a little lower if you need to. While we're here, let's cross our left hand to our right shoulder, excellent and come back to center. Let's notice the right hand crossing over how fluidly it's moving now that we've kind of moved everything around a bit. Let's head turn to the left as we touch our right shoulder. Inhale back, turn your head to the right as you touch your left shoulder. Excellent. Now let's look straight on. Left hand will touch our right knee. Good, back to start. Right hand touches left knee. Now let's add that head turn back in. So looking left, touching right, and take it to the opposite. Touch left knee, look right. Now we're gonna add in a little core. So let's lift up that right knee and touch it and look left, beautiful, and to the other side. Lift your knee, have a little tap, and come back in. Excellent work. Just swing those arms back and forth. We're gonna do some patterning for the brain. Patternings are wonderful for cognitive decline to help keep Alzheimer's and just dementia at bay. You can do crossword puzzles and Sudoku. Those are wonderful. The best thing you can do for memory is exercise. Exercising in pattern is even better. So we're going to take our right hand, lift up, 
grab our fruit and put it in the basket. So look at your hands, spread your fingers and bring that back in. Good. Now we're going to pick our fruit, look up, bring it in and then give it away. So look forward, spread your fingers. Nice. Now this time we're gonna put our fruit in our basket we brought with us. So lift up tall, bring it into your shoulder, hinge forward with a tall spine, drop your apple in the basket. Good, let's try that to the other side. So left arm reaches, pulls it in, we'll drop it in our basket and start again. Reach, pick and give it away, palm up, excellent. This time drop it in your basket, so reach, Pick, lean forward, tall spine, and drop it in the basket. Nice. This time, both arms reach, pick, and basket. Good job. Back to start. Reach, pick, and give away. These are our patternings. Excellent. Reach, pick, and lean and get it in the basket. Okay. Where we really get sharp is where one hand does one thing and the opposite hand does something else. So we're going to put our thinking caps on. So the right hand is going to go in the basket, left hand toward the floor. All right. So here we go. We're going to reach, pick it, right hand to the basket, left hand to the floor. Nice. Come back in. Let's reach it pick it so right hand is going to give away left hand to the floor good all the way back let's reach pick both hand to the baskets nice now let's reach pick right hand to the floor left hand to the basket ah oh, make sure your hands going in the right direction good job and then let's reach pick and both hands give away Good, come on back and reach, grab, and let's put the left hand to the basket and the right hand away, nice, and come on up and reach, pick, and both to the floor. Good work, all that really works the brain, excellent job. We're gonna take a seated forward fold, so sit tall, hands are gonna slide to your knees. And then what I like for you to do is just keep leaning, bend your elbows until your chest rests on your thigh. You can pause here, crown of the head stays forward. If we have eye issues, glaucoma, high blood pressure, we stay up. If you're safe and you can lower your head, feel free. You can lower, you could grab your elbows. I just want you to keep your head up if you need to. And just notice a nice stretch in your back. This should feel nice. If not, we can back it out. Take breath into your back ribs, feel your ribs expand, and then hands to your knees and slowly ragdoll your way back up. Nice and slow, good. And then we'll grab our strap for a little bit more for our shoulders. So you can use a belt, you could use a scarf, an old tie, just any old thing that you can hold on to. It doesn't have to be a proper yoga belt. Today we'll have our hands probably wider than shoulder distance because we're going to test out our mobility. You stay where you are. I'm just going to come sideways so you can see. So we're going to see how far back, strap overhead first, and then how far back can you go? How much mo mobility you have back here? Maybe take your arms wider and maybe you can go back, maybe not. Some of you can keep coming all the way down you just go as far as you can and then come back up good job now we're going to stay here not leaning laterally keep your spine nice and tall the right hand lowers the left arm stays straight spine stays straight feel that stretch yeah and then come back through center arms are quite wide left arm pulls down top arm straight so this is giving us that big connective tissue stretch. Good, let's do it one more time to each side. This is just such a healthy way to release that tightness around our rib cage. Good, all the way up, inhale, and then exhale as you pull it down to the other side. Oh, keep that top arm nice and straight for me. And then one more time, let's just test and see, stretch your chest. If you can go all the way back, that's good. That's called shoulder flossing. Oh, wonderful. Let's take this strap and place it down. And we're gonna grab some water. 
All right. We're going to go back into the feet and back to the brain. All right. So let's see how we do. <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is nice and simple. We're just going to take our right ankle and circle it around again. And I want you to imagine that your right big toe is pressing the big hand of a clock all around the face of a clock. See if you can hit every digit and then pause and go the opposite way, but go all through each number on the clock. Try not to miss any numbers. Good. And let's try the left foot. So start twirling around the face of the clock, the dial, and go the other way, all the way around, the fullest circle you can take. So great for mobility right here. Excellent. Now we're going to take this back to mountain. The left arm is going to lift and the right leg. What I like for you to do is start circling out your ankle, but wave your hand. Wave your hand. Now your hand is going to start wanting to circle. Don't let it. Keep circling that ankle. Good job. Wave your hand and then release and right arm, left leg, circle out the ankle and wave your hand. And notice if one side is a little bit easier to manage than the other. Excellent job. And then release this, sit all the way back, both arms up, both legs up, reach, reach. Excellent job. And then just start pointing and flexing both feet. So we're really reaching through the fingers, Paddle out the feet, alternate, strong bodies. Oh, core work, legs working, and release. Seated mountain pose, ah, oh, nice job. Left arm coming back up, right leg. This time, wave the foot, circle the hand. Oh, you have to stop and think because that ankle really wants to circle, doesn't it? Keep waving it, windshield wiper side to side. <laughs> Release that. Right arm, left foot. Uh, let's wave the foot. Circle the hand. How we doing? Oh, it's challenging. They want to match, don't they? The hand wants to do what the foot's doing. Good job. Think about it. See if you can let them do two separate things. Oh, that works the hippocampus. Nice. Oh, take it out. That one I had to really think about. Shake it out. Okay, now let's take our left arm up and our right leg. This time, point and flex your foot and open and close your fingers. Point and flex, open and close the fingers. Good job. Last one here, we're going to take the right hand up, make your Star Trek. Can you make Star Trek hands? And with your feet, just spread your toes nice and wide. Good. And both arms, both legs up one last time. Really stretch through your heels. Pull your toes back. And release. Good job. Let's come up to the very tip top of our chair. Hands to our heart. We're just going to take them all the way up in a big circle. Good. Back to your heart. Come into cactus. We're going to lean this forward. Take a big breath in. Hands to your knees, forward fold. Good, inhale, pull up halfway. Exhale, fold, take your right arm up nice and straight. Spread your fingers, look at your hand. Exhale to release it, left arm up. Good, and release, inhale, arms out and up. Palms touch, and then we'll make our way back to cactus. Plug that all the way in. Good, bring it out in front of us. Now let's take that back out and up, overhead, round in that big circle. Excellent job. This time, tuck your chin and round your upper back. Now, palms out in front. We're going to take a little twist off to the left. Inhale, center. Twist to the right. Inhale, center. Flip our palms. Exhale, forward, fold. Inhale up halfway and lengthen. Pull back. Exhale and fold, nice, arms out and up in front of us so we can take our chair, lean it forward, forward, forward. Heels down, toes pull up, spread your toes. Nice, arms up, 
Go ahead and come to cactus. Lean forward again. Peek and see if your feet are parallel. Hands to your knees, forward fold. Left arm comes up, stretch it and release. Right arm up and release. Inhale, come up, prepare for chair again. So arms, shoulders height. Lean forward, this time heels lift, toes down, contract those calves. Take the ball up, exhale, hands to your heart space. We're gonna come up to stand. So we'll use the back of our chair. We're just gonna be here momentarily, stretching out our backs. So we'll take our downward facing dog. Fingertips to your chair, tall spines, Let's walk ourselves back. Fingertips hold the chair. You can bend your knees, you can bend your elbows, but pull your back straight, straight. Ears right between your arms. And then walk back up towards your chair and take a big back bend. So lift your heart, hips forward, shoulders back, and then come back to standing pose. Now, right foot stays at the leg of the chair. Left foot steps back. You can keep your right hand on the chair, left hand lifts, and then the right hand. Good job, your knee tracks second and third toe. And let's take our airplane wings. Exhale, twist over your right shoulder. Nice job. Come back through center and twist to your left. Back through center, arms up and overhead. Excellent job, hands to the chair, step it forward, shake out your legs. And then left leg right at the chair, right foot steps back, warrior one. Left arm reaches, right arm reaches, excellent. Come to airplane wings, we'll twist off to our left. Inhale, center, twist to the right, nice. Both arms back up hands to the chair step up and then with your hand at the right hand at the chair feet wide parallel to each other just turn your right toes in between the legs of your chair we're going to bend that right knee your right knee again is more toward your pinky toe than your big toe you can hold on with your right hand left arm extends or if you've got the balance, right arm goes out and we just look over our right middle finger. Excellent, breathing here. And then hand to your hip and your chair, we're gonna straighten the right leg. Left arm reaches or you can have it on your shoulder. And we're just gonna lean off to the side, holding onto the chair or maybe your hand comes to your knee, either one is fine. It's our triangle pose, stretching our spine. Excellent, coming on up and just parallel your feet, put them together and move your chair to the other side. Good job. So feet parallel to each other, legs wide. Turn your left toes in between the legs of your chair. Bend your left knee to where it tracks your middle toes. The right arm extends, your left hand can stay or it can extend as well. Just turn and look over your left middle finger, warrior two, and then hand to the chair, straighten the left leg. Your hand can stay on your hip, your shoulder, or it can come overhead. The tailbone starts lengthening toward that back heel, we bend, maybe hand stays, maybe it rests here, it's up to you. Good job. Now hand on your chair, come all the way back up, parallel your feet and walk in and place your chair in front of you. A little bit for balance and core. Left hand comes out in front, right toes step back from your chair a little bit. And we're gonna bring our elbow and our knee, left elbow, right knee, try to touch and then extend. Exhale, pull your belly button towards your spine, round your back. Inhale, lengthen long. Exhale, round. Inhale, lengthen. Last one, exhale and inhale. Beautiful, everybody. Stand on two feet. 
right palm out in front, left leg behind. Exhale, elbow toward the knee. They don't ever have to touch. We're just heading in that direction. Good. Let's take it two more times. Such great balance and core work. Stretches the back. Good job. How about one more here? Ah, oh, excellent job. Come on back to your chair. Let's get going. We're going to get the whole class in. I don't want you to ever worry. If there's a class before me that runs long, I have been teaching so many classes. <laughs> I know how to speed up or condense or lengthen out a class. We're going to get it all in. No worries. So let's go ahead and pick up our leg and drop it. Now, if you don't have downstairs neighbors you have to worry about, let that leg fall heavy. What we're doing is stimulating the capillaries of our feet. And this is so great for circulation. So if we have a day where we're not walking a whole lot, we want to make sure that we're doing this. It's the same benefits of walking, getting the blood flow out of the calf, out of the shin area. Now, if you like to stomp with a little more core work, arms coming up, excellent job, and then release. So why do we do that? Well, between your ankle and the back of your knee, we have muscles and veins that when the muscles contract, they press on the brain veins and it sends blood flow back up through our bodies. So I want you to take your goddess legs, so legs a little wider, come on to your balls of your feet and kind of like a little ballerina, just walk on your tippy toes because what you're doing is putting pressure on those veins from the soleus muscle and then the, that will send blood up through the body to our heart. Excellent job. Because we know gravity is stronger than our vascular system, we've got to do things to help out the vascular system. Good. Now, heels like a cowboy. So here we go. Walk on your heels. <laughs> and then back to your toes. And then let's heel, toe, heel, toe. Yeah, there you go. Feel that calf working? That blood's flowing. This is great for circulation, guys. You have a sedentary day. This is what we want to do. Okay, bring it back in. Just a couple more stumps. Nice. Work that core. Now, let's go back to that uh, footwork. So scoot all the way back. Right leg up without our hands. Can you take your big toe back toward your shin and the other four toes toward your toe ball mound. <laughs> Can you do that? Big toe back, four toes forward. This is about your brain telling your toes what to do. Good job. Now, can we do the opposite? Big toe toward the toe ball mound, four toes pulled back. We know we can do it because we did it with our hands. It's all about the brain sending the message to the foot. Let's try it to the other side. Left foot up. Big toe toward you, four toes toward the toe ball mound. What I like about this is you can see the flexibility or inflexibility of your feet and how much your body responds to the brain signals. Now, big toe down, four toes back. So you've got to send a lot of messages to get that happening. Stay there, stretch it out. Good job. And the feet down, excellent work. Just take a moment to literally feel crown of the head to the tip of your toe. We worked it all. How's the body feeling? Take the breath, arms overhead. Pull gratitude into your healthy lungs, your heart, your muscles and bones. I'm so grateful for each of you. Thanks for joining. Thanks for waiting. Namaste. Thanks for your patience today, guys. We got it all in. No worries. Take good care and have a beautiful weekend. Enjoy this lovely weather. Bye-bye. Thank you. You too. Yes, thank you. Thank you.